Hi, my name is Kristin Mellemstrand and I'm a medical research student at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondheim. And this is my supervisor. And my name is Torsten Wik and I am professor of pediatrics at the same university. We have studied whether preeclampsia is a risk factor for cerebral palsy. And Kristin, would you explain the background? Perhaps you could start with a few words on cerebral palsy. Yes. Cerebral palsy is the most common motor disability in children, affecting two out of 1,000 newborns. The cause is a brain insult during pregnancy or at birth. There are several subtypes of cerebral palsy, the most common being the unilateral and the bilateral spastic subtypes. Preterm birth is the strongest risk factor, and another important risk factor is low birth weight, probably caused by impaired fetal growth. Preeclampsia is a complication of pregnancy characterized by elevated blood pressure and proteinuria that occurs in approximately 4% of all pregnancies. This complication often leads to low birth weight as well as preterm delivery. Preeclampsia is also a known risk factor for perinatal stroke, which in turn is an important cause of unilateral cerebral palsy. So, theoretically, there are several mechanisms by which preeclampsia may lead to cerebral palsy. In addition to being mediated through preterm birth and low birth weight, we wanted to explore if preeclampsia has a direct effect. We hypothesized that the direct effect of preeclampsia would result in the unilateral cerebral palsy subtype, since preeclampsia is a risk factor for perinatal stroke. This figure shows the three potential mechanisms we wanted to test. First, preeclampsia may increase the risk of cerebral palsy through preterm births. Second, it may increase the risk through low birth weight caused by fetal growth restriction. And finally, preeclampsia may have a direct effect of cerebral palsy, independent of preterm birth and low birth weight. To answer these questions, we link data from the National CP Registry with data from the Medical Birth Registry of Norway for children born between 1996 and 2006. The CP Registry contains detailed clinical data on each child, while the Medical Birth Registry holds perinatal data prospectively recorded on all births in Norway. In total, we analyzed data on 849 children with CP and over 600,000 children without. And what did you find? I found that in babies born at term, exposed to preeclampsia, those with normal birth weight had no increased risk of cerebral palsy, while babies with low birth weight had a threefold increased risk. Babies exposed to preeclampsia born before week 32 had a 20-fold increased risk of cerebral palsy compared with unexposed babies born at term. And in contrast to our hypothesis, preeclampsia was not specifically associated with the unilateral subtype. In conclusion, we found that preeclampsia is a risk factor for cerebral palsy, mainly mediated through preterm birth and low birth weight. We found no evidence of a direct effect of preeclampsia on the risk of cerebral palsy. So, delivery of preeclamptic pregnancies are mostly due to maternal symptoms or severe fetal growth restriction. Our results may indicate that early signs of fetal growth deviation should be taken into account. If you want to know the whole story, please read the full text paper and thank you for your interest in our study.